another episode of the Christian Minute Podcast. My name is Anna Markey and I'm your host. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of family devotions and give you some tips as to how to get started. But before we jump in, I want to set the scene. Okay, so picture this. You decide that you want to have regular family devotions. You even know exactly what you're gonna use to start. So you make your plan and you actually start. But when you do, the kids don't sit still, they don't listen, and you start wondering, why am I doing this? Is this really, really worth it? Now, I bet you that that wasn't the scene you thought I was gonna set up. Because honestly, when I watch a lot of Christian content and really a lot of things on social media, you see that sometimes these moments are glamorized and that like, oh, when you start reading your scripture together, it's all going to be look perfect and your kids are going to be angels and it's all going to go well and they're going to be listening and engaged and you can do this, this and this. And the truth is that like my kids don't actually love having family devotions and we've been doing it for a few years and it's not necessarily easy because most of the times I feel frustrated about it and actually my almost 14 year old daughter one night a few weeks ago we're sitting down to start family devotions and she's like why do we even do this none of us like it like what's the point and honestly that comment hit hard (laughs) and I tried to really not take it personally because we really wanted to have our children love his word but then I remembered back to when we did family devotions and I had the same opinion as her I hated it and our family devotions were a lot more involved than the ones we were having with our kids and so I kind of thought that we'd been giving it easy to them and that you know, there's always a different level that we can go up. So you may be wondering why I'm sharing this with you, but it's because I want to be 100% transparent. I know that all the things that I've been encouraging you to do for the past couple of weeks isn't always easy. And most of the time it can be annoying and sometimes it can be really hard. And certainly when it comes to family devotions, it doesn't always look great. And so if I didn't like it as a youth, right? And if my kids really don't love sitting there and reading scripture, why are we even doing this? Like, why are we fighting so hard to have this as a routine in our family? And like I said, as a youth, I really didn't get it. But now that I'm a mom and I'm a more mature Christian, I realize that Family devotions are really important when it comes to building and training our children up in God's word. In some of the few past podcast episodes, I've talked a lot about how we can raise our children up to know the Lord and how one of the number one things we can do is to model our faith. So when we are sitting down with our family on a regular basis, that is modeling our faith that is showing our children that we believe that scripture is important and that we value it we value it so much that we're going to take time to read it together every day even if it can be a complete disaster and so by making it a priority they see that it's a priority that we're not just telling them to read scripture we're coming alongside and we're doing it together modeling our faith and not only that but when we open scripture we learn about who God is and how God wants us to live and so it's because of those things that we do regular family devotions so if you're interested to know okay you've already given me a warning and it's not necessarily going to look pretty but how can I actually start this and hopefully giving you some tips to make it a little bit easier. So the number one thing that you have to do is to pick a consistent time that you can have family devotions. So 
this can be something that you do regularly, hopefully once a day, and you need to decide when during the day you can do this with your family. And so every family schedule can look a little bit different. So I'm not gonna tell you, oh, you have to do it in the morning or you have to do it at this time, but think of a time that you're all together as a family that you can sit down and you can read God's scripture. One of the easiest way to get started with this is to tack it on to something that you're already doing together as a family. So when my husband and I got married, we talked about how we really felt it was important to have at least one family meal together every single day. So we want to be as a family together, no distractions, no phones, no nothing, at the table together at least once a day. And so for us, since we're already having a family dinner, it made really it made a lot of sense to just have our family devotion time when we're done dinner. So now what we do is when everybody's done dinner before we clear the dishes, we stay at the table and we open God's word and we read it together and then we pray because we're already sitting together. It's really simple. So we're not trying to add something new to the schedule. We're just tacking it on to something that we're already doing. Because to be honest, sometimes we don't have tons of time and it feels like a lot to try to add things to our schedule. So when we're just doing it with something that we're already doing, it makes a lot of sense. So for us, it's family dinner, but maybe for you, it's breakfast or lunch or before bed or when they wake up. Whatever your schedule looks like, something that you're already doing together as a family, trying to tack on that family devotion time, it's really gonna help. And I know that sometimes we may not want to start doing family devotions because we feel like maybe we don't have tons of time, but you don't have to have a long devotion time. You can have it just really simple. We read one verse, we ask two or three questions, then we pray. It takes less than five minutes. If your children are older or maybe you have more time, you can make it longer. But my encouragement is it doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be complicated. Um, but you can start just with one verse and a short prayer and then build up from there if you want to. There are some resources that I'll share with you. Step number two is you want to choose age appropriate material. And this is quite important. So. One of the things that people feel when they read scripture is that they don't understand it. And this may be happening because you're reading like the King James or the New King James and you don't really understand what you're reading. So if you yourself can't understand what you're reading, chances are your kids aren't going to understand what they're doing, what you're reading. So one of the things that we do is I grew up reading the New King James and so I really like it. And so we read everything in the New King James. But sometimes when we read it, the verse isn't very clear. And so we just take out my Bible app. I use YouVersion Bible app. It's really easy. I highlight the verse. I go to compare. It compares it in six different versions. I'll quickly glance through all the versions and they'll give me an idea as to the general picture of this verse. Like, are there some things that every verse is saying that like, what's the point of this verse? And then I can explain it to the kids. But if your kids are really not loving it, like certainly if they're younger, there are so many amazing children's Bibles that you can be using that they can understand at that level. So you don't have to be reading the King James or the New King James or the NIV. You can be reading something a little bit younger for them so that they can understand it. But the flip side is also important is that when your kids grow older, you don't want to be continuing to read those younger books because one, they're going to think, oh, I've already read this. Like, it's not interesting. And two, it's like, I'm not a kid anymore. Like, I, let's learn more. And so then when they're older, transitioning to, you know, maybe a different version or a devotion that's targeted for that particular age, and I know that this can be difficult because, you know, we have six years between our oldest and our youngest. So sometimes picking something that suits everybody's age is kind of hard, which is why we don't necessarily follow a family devotional type book. 
we just read the verse of the day in the YouVersion Bible app. Because one of the gifts that the Lord's given me is I can read scripture and I can easily explain it to my kids regardless of what age. And my husband sometimes gets jealous because he'll read the verse and be like, oh, I, like, how do I simplify this for my kids? And he just can't. So he'll look at me and I'll explain it. And he's like, how do you do that? And I, I don't know. It's just a gift the Lord's given me. So if that's the issue for you, then I highly encourage to find a devotional book that is kind of maybe in the middle between kids and teens that people can understand. It's understandable for the young children, but a little bit challenging for the older kids. Um, but the thing is, is that you know your children best. So you know their understanding level. You know what's going to work for them. So you know that, okay, they're going to be able to sit for five minutes, two minutes, one minute, six minutes, whatever it is, right? You know that, oh, you know what? They're really advanced and they understand this version. So let's read that. You know your children best. You know what works for your family. So I just encourage you just to take a few minutes and think about those things and think about, okay, like what material can I use that I can easily use every day that I don't have to be spending tons of time to go and find that it's really just like right there, easy, easy to use at the, like near the dining table, but it's easily, you can incorporate it wherever you are and doesn't take much more time. So what does that resource look like? and when you're gonna be using it. Step three is to involve your family in this process. So when my kids were younger, they didn't really get a lot of decisions as to the books that we were reading, um, but my husband and I would go through the different materials and choose what we wanted to do with them, and that's what they would do. As they become older, um, you know, if they are interested in doing a particular devotion, then we're happy to give it a try. So for example, um, a few months ago, we went to my sister's house and they do a particular devotional calendar that they had an extra copy that they sent home with us. And so recently my middle daughter, she's like, hey, why don't we do this for devotion? So we're like, okay, sure, why not? And so for the next couple of weeks, we'll be going through that devotion because she was really interested in doing it. So it gives them some autonomy and some input into how you're doing things so that they feel engaged in it. We also don't try to force our children to read scripture or to pray because we don't want them to feel like it's something they have to do. We will ask them or we will encourage them, but we try not to force them. If you're invested in what you're doing, then you're gonna be more interested and one of the ways to be invested is to kind of be part of the decision-making when it comes to how you're doing your devotions and when you're doing it. So again, that's not gonna relate to when your kids are younger, but I find like, you know, 10 and above, having that some, like that type of engagement with your children will help them feel more connected to the family devotions and a little bit more engaged because they were part of that process of deciding, you know, when to do it, how to do it, when to read it kind of thing. The next step is, again, it's part of the engagement is it's really good to read scripture, but I also really encourage you to ask a few open-ended questions. So a lot of the family devotions will have some questions you can ask. So you don't need to worry about, oh my, like what questions am I gonna ask them? But really an open-ended question is a question that your kids can't answer with a simple yes or no. They have to think about it a little bit and then give their answer. So this usually then drives a conversation. And then sometimes they will even peek another question in their brain that they can ask about that particular scripture. And then you can try and answer with the best of your abilities. And maybe their question feels intimidating for you because maybe you're, you, you're a new Christian or you just don't really know a lot of the scripture and you don't know all the answers. And honestly, I don't even know all the answers and I've been a Christian a really long time. So if your child asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, just be honest about it. Say, you know what, I'm not really sure, but I'll look into it and I'll get back to you. Because... You know, it's important that your children see that you're also on a faith journey and that you are learning more and more about God as you're reading scripture and that you can be doing that together. And so it's a really great way to engage your kids, to have them think about scripture. And like I said, 
You don't have to spend 20 minutes on this. You can ask them one or two really simple questions. You can even take turns. So like I said, we have three kids. And if I ask them a question, I don't necessarily need each of them to answer every single question. Maybe one question I ask one of the kids and the other question I ask a different one of the kids. And then we wrap it all up in prayer. And I said, hey, do you wanna pray today? Do you wanna pray today? No, 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 okay, anything you wanna pray about, let's pray. So it doesn't have to be complicated, but when you add just a simple thing here and there, it can really bring that to a new level of understanding and just connection with Christ's word. The last step is to really emphasize God's grace and the flexibility when it comes to having family devotions. So my husband grew up going to Catholic church and school, they really emphasize religion about doing certain things because you have to, because if you don't, then these, this and this consequences. And so for him, he really wants our children to understand that the things that we do aren't because we have to do them. It's because we love God and we want to spend time with him. So we're trying to teach our children relationship with God and not religion. So if we want to do family devotions, but one night, you know, we have to cut dinner short and we have to go straight to something else, it's okay because we don't want our kids to feel like if they miss one night of family devotions that, you know, everything's wrong in the world and horrible things are gonna happen because that just isn't the truth. That we can have flexibility, that it isn't about how many times we open God's word, it's about our desire to know God more and to share God with our children. And so it's really important to us, like I said, to share our relationship with God with our children. God doesn't work on a merit system. He doesn't love us more if we go to church more. He doesn't love us less if we go to church less. But really, there are just so many benefits to regularly being with God's people and reading his word that it's, it's worth it to do those things, but it's not a relationship ender. Like you're going to have a closer relationship with the Lord if you're spending more time with him, but you can still have a good relationship with the Lord if you're not reading your Bible, you know, an hour every day. Like it's okay. Like I said, if we miss a devotion here or there, it's okay because God still loves us. But if we're missing it a lot, then we can start and think it's like, okay, like why are we missing it? Has our priorities changed? Is it our schedule? Do we need to redig some things? And so it brings up a question. It doesn't bring on guilt. It just brings up a question. And then you try and answer that question and say, okay, is this something really that I want to be doing? If so, why isn't this working? If it's not working, what can I do to change it? And then taking the steps to change it to match your desire. So in all these teachings, I really don't want you to walk away feeling guilty because you're not doing this, that, or the other thing. Just the question of, do you have a desire to know the Lord? Do you have a desire for your children to know the Lord? If you do, then these are the things that I encourage and these are some of the steps that you can take. Now, one of the biggest challenges is figuring out, okay, like, yes, I want to do it, but what material can I use? And so I just want to share with you one resource right now that is free. It's called the Christ-Centered Home Bundle, and it has 33 free, amazing resources for you to use to help you center your life around Christ. But there are some specific resources in the bundle that will help you have, you know, like family devotions and to help you you know, raise your children to know God. And the first is a one year Bible reading plan. So this is a plan that I've created and it's a 12 month plan and each plan has a theme and then it has like 30 verses and it's just the references and there's a little box that you can check. So you can just have that with you close to the table and when it's time for family devotions, check the verse reference, grab your Bible, open it, read it, talk about it, simple prayer. It's really simple and it has a theme for you you can use. The other one is an ebook. It's called Praying for the Godly Seed and I'm just going to read the description. This is a prayer manual that encourages parents and children to pray and get results from prayer. So this gives you a step-by-step -step guide on praying for the godly seed. So if you're looking for ways to teach your children more about prayer, that's a great resource. The third is called the Family Compassion and Kindness Coloring Book. So 
Um, one of the strategies I didn't talk if, about a few weeks ago is about, you know, when you're wanting to teach your children more about God's word, a great way to do that is through crafts. And this is through coloring. So this is that says col coloring together and engaging with these verses creates lasting memories that your family can cherish, allowing you to spend quality time with family, but also your children learning what they color. Because usually when you're coloring something, it you're reading it. And when you're reading it, you remember it and it can encourage you to know the Lord. So that's a great way to kind of introduce your children to scripture in a really like low pressure way by reading scripture. So this is the Christ Centered Home Bundle. It's free right now. If you're interested, you can go to www.onechermanlife.com forward slash bundle to sign up today. Make sure you grab that for you so that you can have those resources. So I hope that this has encouraged you a little bit to get started. Um, if you have questions, make sure to add them in the comments below and make sure to join me next week. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you later. Bye.